or even worse, I am setting a low latency, but I'm getting all this crackling noise in my recording. What is up everybody, it is your boy Fire. Thank you once again for tuning in to another video, man. Shout out notification squad. Hope you're having a great day. Definitely make sure to smash that like button. Let's get straight into the video. We're gonna be discussing audio latency, especially in regards to recording vocals in FL Studio, but this theory can obviously apply in any door. So the first thing we'll be doing is obviously pulling up our audio latency tab and then we'll be describing what audio latency is and how it uh, can pretty much impact your recording process. So let's get straight into it. But first, a word from today's sponsor, DistroKid. If you make music and regularly collaborate with other artists, DistroKid have a feature that might just benefit your life. This feature is called Teams and allows you to split any profits generated from your music when it is streamed online to any collaborators involved on said project. Let's say you have a partnership with a producer and have an agreement to split any profits generated by your song 50-50, you can easily set this up within your DistroKid profile. The best part about this is that DistroKid did not take any commission on generated earnings, meaning once you pay your yearly subscription fee, you'll be good to go. Collaborators will however also need a DistroKid profile in order to collect these profits. You can send them an invitation code from within your DistroKid profile and also give them a 50% off promo code for the first year. Once accepted, any designated earnings will be assigned and sent off to them. Running a music empire should be as streamlined as possible, and with solutions like these, there's no reason not to be in this day and age. Check the link below for more info, and if you haven't signed up yet, feel free to use my promo code for 7% off your first year subscription. Keep working and innovating, back to the video. So in FL Studio, you will be, you know, obviously going to your options, and then audio settings, there is a nice shortcut which you can use, which is F10, and then you can just click on the audio devices tab. And over here, we'll see some cool, interesting, uh, up-to-date information on our system's latency. Now, it is probably important for me to describe what audio latency is. So the best way I can describe it is your total latency, which you can see right here, is pretty much the time it takes for your computer to process all the sound, send it out of the master, and then for you to hear that sound. That is the total latency. Now, if you have a latency which is too high, you're gonna get that delay in your voice. Uh, you're gonna get that delay with the beat. You know, a lot of people DM me saying, hey man, I'm hearing this delay, it sounds bad. Or even worse, I am setting a low latency, but I'm getting all this crackling noise in my recording. That obviously means your computer is being overloaded, meaning it's computing too much and you're giving it too little time to compute all of those tasks that need to be computed before you actually hear the sound. So we'll be looking into how we can deal with that. But first things first, let's kind of break down how we can actually calculate latency and how we can obviously begin to deal with it. So as you can see right here, we have this thing right here, this little tab right here that says latency input, and it has another tab right there, which says or another section, which says output latency. And obviously that totals to our round trip latency. So. You know, how do we deal with that? Well, first things first, you can see that my audio interface, obviously you might have a USB microphone, you might just have a standard computer sound card, whatever it is, is going to have to be set to a set latency. Now, as you can see right here, I'm using the Mo2, so I've obviously got my device set up, Mo2 Pro Audio, and I have set it to a system setting of 128 samples or three milliseconds. Those are the two ways that we can actually measure latency. I prefer to measure it in milliseconds because it is a lot more realistic. Obviously everyone knows about milliseconds, but people might not know what a sample is. So, you know, this is a nice value to set, obviously if you are recording and you have a nice powerful computer, but some people might not have that luxury. So if you are using a computer which is not so high in CPU power, you might wanna go for a value of, let's just pull up my uh, device tab right here. And um, you know, you could go for anything up to around 256 samples is gonna be good stuff. If you can get lower, beautiful, you're obviously gonna hear less of a delay, but the higher or the lower you go in um, your buffer size, the more crackling you're going to get. So that's kind of the game that we're trying to play. We're trying to find a, you know, region where we can have a comfortable amount of plugins running while recording, but we also want to be able to make sure that our recordings aren't getting that crackly sound in them. So we'll kind of look into how we can deal with that. So once you've figured out what the best value is, you can then begin to calculate what your project's total latency is. What are all the plugins 
adding in terms of latency well that's an easy calculation all right so if you want to look here we can see the total latency is nine milliseconds okay now obviously i told you earlier my audio interface or my devices latency was set to three milliseconds so what we can do is we can say nine minus three equals six milliseconds and that is pretty much going to be our devices or our project's total latency um you know and the total time it's going to take for us to hear that sound so if i was to for example pull up an auto-tune plugin a lot of people are recording these days with isotopes and auto-tunes we're going to get an increase in latency so we're using one of my templates right here real quick and let's just say we were to pull up an auto-tune let's see what happens so we can see that instantly when i turn this on we're going to get an increase in latency. Can you see how that value has now gone up from 9 to a total of 63? Obviously, if we did the calculations, we would find that Autotune is now adding 60 milliseconds of latency, and that is way too much latency. I can't record like that. You can't record like that. There'll be too much of a delay, delay between our voice and what we're actually hearing. So that's no good, right? So this is why you need to find plugins which are low in latency and low in CPU while recording. This is kind of uh, essentially CPU management while recording. This is the engineer's job. Luckily, um, you know, this is my favorite auto-tune as it comes with the low latency function. So that's why that's there. If I click this, right, first things first, how to identify latency? You can look there in the top left corner. Some doors won't offer this, some will. Pro Tools, you'll find it at the bottom of the mixer. But if I hover over this auto-tune plugin, Right here, we can see that it's adding about 55.42 milliseconds of latency, which is quite a lot, right? Um, but if we punch the low latency mode, just look at the, at the right in the audio settings tab, boom, now we add 10 milliseconds. That is a lot more reasonable. My general rule of thumb is to not really go over 10 milliseconds, 12, 13 milliseconds, kind of at max, is going to give you a nice uh, kind of recording experience. So there you go. As you can see, that's kind of how we can monitor our latency. I'll leave that on for now. Second to that, we can kind of now look at how we can identify what plugins are actually causing a lot of latency. Well, as you saw earlier, I simply hovered over the plugin and I can see right there, okay, two milliseconds of latency, not too bad. I would not recommend recording with Isotope on. I would not recommend recording with, you know, uh, the older version of Andre's Autotune. I've seen people doing that. It's crazy. Autotune 5 without low latency mode. Absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, many ways to do things. Um, but in... You know, all in all, if you're recording someone, if you're recording yourself, make sure your latency is lower than 10 milliseconds or 15 milliseconds at max, let's say, and make sure that you set a reasonable latency on your audio interface to give your computer time to calculate everything that is going on within your project. So hopefully that explains latency, man. Hopefully you can now begin recording, um, you know, have a better experience recording without the delay, etc., etc. And if you are interested in this template I have, check the link in the description, as well as if you are looking to learn how to record in FL Studio or mixing FL Studio, I have courses below, uh, one based on recording in FL Studio, one based on mixing in FL Studio, and a vocal enhancer plugin, which will source up your vocals in FL Studio. <laughs> so yeah, man, hopefully have a great day. I'll check you next time. Peace out. <laughs>